welcome to Wine Decoded, guys. Today is a fantastic day for us. We are very lucky to have Luca from Castello de Rampola here with us. Uh, Castello de Rampola in Tuscany makes some wonderful wines, and we've got a array of them in front of us to try. But first of all, Luca, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying your, your trip in Australia. Um, perhaps we could uh, kick off by... I guess hearing a little bit about your story, how the winery started and, and how you started and mm. maybe that turning point where wine really became a passion for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the winery started in the 60s, late mm. 60s. And, um, and so has been a family business since then. The house was in the family since many years. Many mm. years. It was a summer, summer holiday house. Mm. And then my father in the late 60s began this wine business, not knowing anything about quality wine. Mm. In Italy, late 60s, quality wine was almost uh, a known word. Yeah, there were some, some dubious wines around. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> they were, yeah, industrial, just collecting grapes or wine, but yeah. no idea. So in the beginning, we began to just sell grapes, then wine, mm. fermented wine. And only in six, uh, 75, mm -hmm. we began to bottle a small amount of mm -hmm. wine. And um, beginning then has been an ongoing process about quality. Mm -hmm. I should say, in the beginning, only quality of the wine. And happily, when I took over the farm with my sister in 94, mm -hmm. it became quality about the soil. Yeah, yeah. So, and this is where my passion began. Mm -hmm. Because before, of course, you know, I didn't want to study, so I wanted to stay outside. So it was good to work in the farm, mm -hmm. just to be free. Mm -hmm. But something was suffering. Mm -hmm. Chemical agriculture kills mm -hmm. slowly, slowly the soil and also humans, everyone, animals, microorganisms. Mm -hmm. So I had enough mm -hmm. and whoosh, I went away for seven years. Wow, so what did you do uh, seven years? The best, taking care about myself, yeah. which is the best. Yeah. And in the meantime, <laughs> a son was coming. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I do completely other things, taking care about, especially I discover how to feel, mm. which was unknown before. Before mm -hmm. was doing, thinking. And in those seven years, I discover that feeling is the base of life. Mm -hmm. So when I got back in the farm, I applied those principles to agriculture, before mm -hmm. to the soil, to agriculture. And so, and you know, feeling is a, slow, is a slow process. And so we took, let's say, five years to see the beginning of something else, surprise. And surprise is life acting by itself mm -hmm. with less intervention as possible. Mm -hmm. And so from 94 to now is 26 years and now is a surprise. Mm -hmm. Every year is a surprise. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that look that's wonderful. It's interesting when you talk about that. I I couldn't help but think about um what makes good wine and and really at the end of the day what makes good wine is a wine that can evoke feelings that has a personality. Yes. And it made me think a lot about what happens in many vineyards, uh, and it's 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 a recipe. Mm -hmm. it's, you need a certain uniform soil. You need to adjust the pH and add this nutrient and do this and do that. That's but close to death. It's close to death. <laughs> it, it can be useful to understand some of those things, but to be able to understand the whole system and have a, a feeling, a good a, a good sense of touch yeah. uh, and, 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 and read the vines a little bit and how they're responding exactly. rather than yeah. performing a recipe exactly. uh, tends, to, tends to make better wines. Yeah, so. yeah it's about observing. Mm -hmm. Observing without thinking. Mm. <clears throat> so observing, <clears throat> which means feeling, tasting, touching, walking, uh, tasting the soil, <clears throat> and then Information comes by themselves. Mm. So it's not a, think, a thinking process. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, the thought is bypassed. Actually, the thinking process realize, re, can realize what is happening. Yeah. That's so, the only purpose of the thinking process. Yeah, yeah. 
So it's it's almost that you you've you've gone to becoming uh, sort of from unconsciously competent in an area to being consciously competent. Yes. Uh, yes. As as yes. you become more aware of yes. the surroundings and what's happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Fascinating. It's, it's fascinating. Yes, that's the word. Fascinating. Yeah. Do you think that seven years away helped you with 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 with, with that compared to if you'd stayed on the vineyards? No, no, of course, it was impossible to find those things in the family and in the vineyards. Mm. Yeah. You know, we got information about biodynamic farming very very long ago. Mm. And so we were inviting, we means me and my brothers, we were inviting some biodynamic consulting, which gave very simple advices, but my father was resisting. Mm -hmm. So all that generation, so it means people born in 20, 1925. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe Second World War, probably, mm -hmm. cut something away. Mm. And so, yeah, he, wa he was not able to perceive what is behind this, mm. which is called life, simply, life. So yes, the seven years, they were basic. Mm. And I think, I think that's actually the, the wonderful thing about not only the Italian wine industry, but the wine industry around the world, is that we've seen an availability uh, of technologies, we've seen an availability mm -hmm. of knowledge and some sharing of knowledge more broadly around the world. Yeah. Uh, and so we've got this osmosis, you know, from new world to old world mm -hmm. and back again. Mm. And the last couple of generations have been very willing to experiment. Mm. And at the same time, they've now been experimenting for long enough to have a few gray hairs and a bit of wisdom. Mm. And they're more comfortable in their skins and with their winemaking and being able to read a vintage and handle their vineyards and grapes in the winery according to a vintage. Uh, so I think we're seeing more detail in vineyards and better wines as a result. Is that, is that yes, fair yeah. for you as well? Did you, yes, have you yeah. found that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's everywhere in the world, mm. especially young people, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was there anyone in particular that influenced uh, some, you know, made some, made you sort of disrupt your brain and, and think about things differently? Yes, of course. The, the first is a Japanese man Mm -hmm. now passed away, it was called Masanobu Fukuoka. Mm -hmm. And he wrote the book, books and also was giving speeches about the no agriculture. Mm -hmm. So is agriculture where each year we do less. Mm -hmm. So we don't do other things, we do less mm -hmm. and less and less mm -hmm. and less. For instance, now in our farm since few years, we don't move the soil, mm -hmm. and when we want to seed, they're, they're called bomb seeds. Mm -hmm. So we put seeds in clay, little balls, ah, yes, yes. dry, and then pop, yep. pop. They've been using those uh, in areas that have been devastated by bushfires, not, yes. not so recently, and uh, not yet, but previously, and, and dropping them from aircraft to, yeah, yeah. to yeah. sow millions of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. seeds in, yeah, uh, yeah. in a go. Yeah. And with that, that clay ball protects them beautifully. Exactly. Gives them greater chances. Yeah, yeah. And then the soil will decide what comes up, when, etc. Mm. So it's really having a, a healthy relation with the soil. And soil you, is clever. And, and, and do, you, <laughs> do, you, do you choose those, those seeds quite carefully, thinking, well, these plants tend to penetrate their roots deeper and That's it will it. allow more yeah. water in and, yeah. Yeah. and more accessibility yeah. for the vine? Yeah, the idea is to have many different forms of uh, roots. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, some penetrate, you know, some, some seeds, some roots can go 80, 90 centimeters down. Yeah, yeah. But because they are usually those plants, they live uh, four years. Mm -hmm. So after four years, you have an amazing big deep roots mm -hmm. which is eaten by microorganisms and mm -hmm. so you have channels yeah yeah then of course this goes to very light machinery yeah and so because the the soil wants to breathe yeah it is soil is a skin so you have all those channels where water can penetrate yeah. air can penetrate because we forget my roots wants to have also air mm -hmm. And so you, get, you have a breathing soil, mm. soft breathing soil, mm. and that's it. Then it's just to wait. <laughs>
and and the and the diversity of, of plants will result in different different materials in the in the root systems yeah different nutrients yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. also different fungi microflora yes, yes. so yeah, you yeah. have diversity and complexity yeah yeah. Greater ability to absorb nu nutrients and minerals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Life, light, yeah. So you, you never you never cultivate at all anymore. No, <clears throat> because <clears throat> so that's also another doing less. Mm. So we cut weed high. This is very important mm. high because the soil has to be in shade. Mm -hmm. And when we meet some nice plants, we don't cut them. Yeah. So we don't cut them. So they make seed. Mm. Seed goes around, so we don't seed. Mm. So is it not, not, not? Yeah. It's amazing. So and it's very, very. Even going down a row, you'd be like cut a little bit here, cut a little bit here. Exactly. So very yeah. manual. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. They, we have machinery, of course. Yeah. Well, let's say under under the um, the roads of the um, vines. Yes, we do by hand. Mm. But in the middle and closer, we do with light machinery. Actually, lawn machinery. The, you mm. know, professional gardener. Yeah. Yeah. It's 400 kilos, yeah. large wheel, yeah. then you pass, you go back and you don't know where you passed. Mm. So, or walking or that. Mm. And then harvest, which could be the heaviest moment, we have uh, electric machinery, very mm. light, mm -hmm. to put the box on. Yeah. So the tractor goes only on the road, around. Ah, I see, I see. And because it goes only once a year, now also on the road there is weed. That's another thing. Weed yeah. has to be everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so weed means flowers, means insects. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, <laughs> and what have you seen as being the changes in your wines from, say, your father's generation? Mm. Obviously, you know, wine is such an incredibly long process of uh, experimenting where, you know, you do something and you might only truly understand the results in 15 years, mm -hmm. 20 years. Mm -hmm. Have there been sort of significant differences that, that, that have been most important for you? Uh, vitality. Yeah. Energy. Mm -hmm. um, complexity. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. And, 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 and it's funny because some of these things we were described to just by an age. So there'd be a portion of people would say, oh, you know, it's just, your vines are a bit older, they're a mm. bit more balanced. Um, but you think all of the processes, the biodynamic and organic processes have really contributed quite heavily to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and how biodynamic are you? Do you do everything biodynamically or do you mix a little bit? No, no. Everything as much as we can. Of course, it's better to choose some days for harvest but mm. sometimes we have to do something else. Mm. So as much as we can. If it rains like today. <laughs> voilà. And it's a day to collect, of course we don't do it. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, the best as we can. Yeah. Because it's not, it's a, yeah, it's a process. It's, yeah. a, it's not rules, they are principles. Voilà. Mm. They are principles and so we play with that. Yeah. It's very easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you know what? Thank you for that. You're welcome. It's very insightful, but I think it's now time to have a look at some wine. Mm -hmm. Shall we have a look at your Trebbiano? Yes, to, of course. To, to start? Yeah. Let me uh, grab this one. Tell me about Trebbiano. Trebbianco. Oh, Trebbianco. We mean three Sorry. whites, three whites. Now, actually, there are four, but in the beginning, there were three. So, 50% uh, Trebbiano. Mm -hmm. The only one who in this vintage was got maceration for one week. Mm -hmm. And then the rest, the other 50 is a Chardonnay mainly, then Sauvignon Blanc and Gewürztraminer. It's, it's quite a diverse, diverse array uh, yeah. of varieties. What, um, what led you to planting the, the French varieties? No, I did do that. That is, yeah, because so first we begin with Cabernet Sauvignon and then we will see afterwards. Hmm. And so getting Cabernet Sauvignon, then we got curious about what was going around. Hmm. And so we began to graft hmm. because, you know, the, the Chianti Classico recipe is uh, Sangiovese, Canaiolo, mm -hmm. the two reds, and Malvasia and Trebbiano. Mm -hmm. In theory, because when we begin to, yeah, the, um, 
chemical agriculture, we realized that canaiolo could not get ripe. It mm. was rotten before getting ripe. Mm -hmm. Same Malvasia, same, uh, same Trebbiano. Mm -hmm. And Sangiovese San was very weak. So we had to find out something else, and that was Cabernet Sauvignon, mm -hmm. grafting. So we changed it, you know, it, on the time was already 20 hectares, and 10 of them all grafted. So you're looking for thicker skins and disease of, resistance of as course, a priority at the of time. Of course, of yeah. course. Mm. Because, the, yeah, too much work on the vineyards makes the, the vines grow so much, mm. but the fruit then suffers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of leaves, a lot of wood, a lot of thick, uh, pale grapes. Mm. <laughs> so Cabernet Sauvignon was, duh, let's do that. And then the other Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Etraminer was, let's see what happens. Mm. So, a curiosity. Well, it's a, it's a beautiful wine. It's got great harmony. Those, those individual varieties don't really stick out. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's quite together. And very is no added sulfite. Yeah. Is that, that's is my, that, my, my Why is that joy. important to you? <laughs> huh? Why is that important for you? Uh, because, you know, it's just juice, fermented juice, no mm. field, no nothing. You just put in nice container. In this case, it's um, ceramic. Mm. You know, of course, sulfites are very useful. Mm -hmm. But each time you put them, the one gets weaker. Mm -hmm. Then it comes back. Yep. But there are little shocks. Useful show, as in life, you know, we, yeah. we get useful shocks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's also nice to have just, uh, and then you know, many people don't drink wine because sulfites. Mm -hmm. So it opens uh, uh, <laughs> big numbers of people, oh, we could not drink, and now. Uh, that's, 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 that's often through misinformation, but. Um, well, they, they, they say they can't drink wine because of sulfites, but they eat potato chips that are being treated with sulfur or um, yeah. dried fruit that has, you know, a hundred times the amount of sulfur. No, but, you know, there are really some people, they, they get uh, red. Oh, and of course. So. Yeah. Yeah. And usually they are very sensitive people. This is yeah. why they are allergic. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, it's good to get that kind of um, mm -hmm. uh, taste or drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this has got a, a, a lovely core of fruit. And some beautiful acidity in it. Yeah. And it's quite it's quite refreshing. It's a nice juicy acidity. I see what you mean about the, the vitality. And there there's certainly um, it's certainly quite a complex wine. And for me, whilst it's got some oxidative characters, mm. they're balanced with the fruit in this wine. Mm. Mm. What um how do you normally describe describe this wine? <laughs> you know, usually I don't describe wine. Mm. I, I, you know, we taste wine and then I wait for answer, for questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, vital, yes, balanced. Mm. This is why we, we choose carefully the day of harvest, mm -hmm. where uh, the best acidity and the best sugar meets. Mm -hmm. Uh, then of exotic, yes, some pineapple mm. comes out. I should say this is a little cold. Yep, yep. Let's say three, four degrees. Uh, we'll blame it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it will. Yeah, it will show more. Eh? It's yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. Little... yeah, yeah. Well, look, it's it's a it's a lovely wine and, and loads of personality. Uh, I think that's something attractive. It does intrigue you and, and draw you back in to smell it again and again. So, mm -hmm. And is it a field blend? Is it all picked at the same time? No, 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 no. All separately? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, uh, you, from um, Trebbiano to... Actually, from Chardonnay, which is the first, to Trebbiano, sometimes there are two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very changeable every year. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Then another thing. Another thing is that those vital wine, after many years of clean, light agriculture, they react mm. so. So the, the, as a taste or drinker, you can personalize the wine. Mm. Mm. So as we do, you know, when we meet, we adapt to each other right? yeah. in order to have a communication. Mm -hmm. And so those wines, they do the same. Mm. And this is, uh, I find, fascinating. 
So they carry a message. And, and the message okay. is relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then when we are relaxed, they are relaxed. Oh, it begins a very personal experience with the wine. Yeah, yeah. So the wine becomes medicine. You know, in, in, in the ancient time, uh, wine was food and mm. medicine. Mm. And I, I think it, uh, it goes one step further and becomes memorable as well. It's, uh, it's not something that you've just simply drunk uh, for voilà. consumption. Yeah. 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 Mm. The idea is um, the wine awakens something inside, mm. which is the roots of everyone, everything, every, mm. everything which is yeah, nature, life, energy, light. There are so many ways to mm. call it because we cannot name it, mm. but we can feel it. So <laughs> this is the idea, just to ah, yeah. ah, a kind of question mark. Yeah. Ah, ah. Because we are all born with this, but we forget it. It's funny because sometimes, uh, I guess in, in my job, I, I find myself having to analyze wines in quite a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. uh, when in actual fact, uh, when I come across the good ones, which fortunately I come across quite frequently, I actually really, I really just want to sit down and drink it. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, well let's, let's try, try, try another wine. Is there a pair of wines that's worth trying now uh, together that, you, that you, you, you think would work well? It could be Chianti Classico. Yeah, Chianti Classico first. Yeah, because the Sangiovese, pure Sangiovese 16, it yeah. will cover Chianti Classico. So Chianti Classico, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 2017 was a problematic because in May we lost already half crop for frost, mm -hmm. but what was left, very, very amazing. Yeah, so you had, had good concentration in, in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, because some vines, they had no grapes at all, and some other, they had very spare berries. It's hard to work with, to know when it's ripe, you know, to when to pick the vineyard, yeah. because, you know, you, you might have a, a, a vine that has a half yeah, yeah. normal crop and exactly. a vine that has a quarter normal crop yeah. and a vine that has nothing. Yeah. But this is why we do sometimes three pass, uh, three, commission, three times we go in the same vineyard to pick the grapes. Yeah. And did it affect all of the varieties, Sangiovese, Cabernet and Merlot? Yeah. Yeah, yeah wow. Yeah. But strangely, you know, yeah, unpredictable because some low, usually frost comes from down. Yeah. So some low vineyards, they, did, they were not affected. And some, you know, oh, mystery. Nature is pretty mysterious. Same thing happened in Burgundy yeah. in 16. Everyone's saying that the frost pattern didn't make sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was almost reversed. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, wow. Well. Yeah, it was pretty strange. It was very useful to have a weed high. Hmm. Because, of course, uh, frost plays the, um, less with high weed. Mm. Because they, yeah, cannot penetrate so much. Mm. But still was affected. But you know, also in this kind of agriculture, we are very open to lose, in that case, 50%, it's a little too much, mm. but usually 10, 15%. Yeah. So it's not about having 100%. No. Yeah. It's a play. With yeah. That. Yeah. But usually, um, uh, nature is very generous. Mm. When, when nature feels reverence and respect, oh. Yeah. So yeah. rich, so much richness comes. It's interesting because I think it's it's uh, one of those things when you're looking after the after the the health and the vitality of, of the whole system, the the grapes and, and the vines are healthy enough and they're more resistant to some of those events, yes. whether it be a disease yes. or a, a temperature event, yeah. and the way you're managing the soil yeah. keeps the roots in a more stable environment yeah. in terms of temperature and moisture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is an interesting wine. It's mm -hmm. really opening, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. just in the even in a few seconds in the glass. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what happens in terms of oak in your wines and, and your your approach with, with barrels and yeah. So um, concrete fermentation, con mm -hmm. fermentation in concrete, maceration in concrete. Mm -hmm. Then we wait a couple of months to, for sediments to go down. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Sangiovese goes in casks of, now we have 12 hectolitres casks. Mm -hmm. 
and it stays for one year. Mm -hmm. One year. Then bottle, and then some other six more months in bottle. Mm -hmm. This is for for Chianti Classic. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And the same for the Cabernet and the Merlot components. Uh, Merlot and Cabernet, they go in um, now more to northern barriques. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the problem of wood is, wood is perfect for brief. Mm -hmm. So maturing the wine is perfect. The thing is that new wood tastes new, old wood tastes old. So <laughs> there are two, three years where it's not old, it's not new, it's not old. Mm. And so the, now we are playing with that, so we change usually 15 to 20 percent wood every mm. year. So it's a kind of balance between. Yeah. Because the idea is that wine has to not um, smell and taste uh, with wood. Mm. No. Wine has to be wine. Mm -hmm. So it's going to the more, most neutral container. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wood is, is beautiful, of course, wood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it has this, um, let's say, this limitation. Yes, yeah? yeah, of course. Well, I think the wood component in that is, is nicely laid in. Mm. There's some textural elements in there that I think are actually perhaps coming more from the, the Cabernet mm -hmm. than the oak that could be yeah. perceived as being oak tannin. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you find that you get a reasonable amount of structure from the Cabernet, uh, from your vineyards? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you find you get a reasonable amount of tannin? Or the, the yeah, yeah. Cabernet is quite tannin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is quite, but not too much, because, again, with that kind of agriculture, it drives a balance. Yeah. And, and so usually it's more the... Um, how do The soil speaks more than the variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's interesting because I think quite often when we look at, at uh, wines made from Cabernet varietals in Italy, they look like Italian Cabernet, not French Cabernet, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. Um, do you macerate your Cabernet for, for long? One, usually one month, 40 days. Yeah. Sometimes we make experiment, so... Yeah, we make experiment for four or five months, we did with only Sangiovese. Mm -hmm. You know, we, yeah, it's also very interesting that just to, just to fill it mm. with skin inside, mm. and then in February, March, mm. so after four, five, six months. Mm. But usually we don't do that. Mm -hmm. mm. Be yeah, because then you know the skin gives, but after sometimes takes away. Yep. Yep. And so. It's finding the, the right we, we time. Ta yeah, we taste the skin. Uh, okay, done. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. in this way, the press, the fresh um, skins, they give another very nice elements to add to the wine. Mm -hmm. There's a slightly what I describe as edgy tannin in there, but edgy in a good way. And yeah, yeah, I perceive yeah. some of that maybe coming from those those skins. Yeah. I used to press Cabernet by looking for flowers looking for mm. violets and then pencil shavings. Mm. And when the pencil shavings came for, for our fruit in the mm -hmm. Yarra Valley, that was a sign that we're, we, we're ready to stop the maceration. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, I find that wine uh, to be in <laughs> incredibly thirst quenching. Mm. Mm. Just beautiful, juicy fruit, lovely, juicy acid. It does have that edgy tannin in it, but it's good tannin. Mm. It's sort mm -hmm. of that front mid palate tannin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The length of the fruit that it finishes with is 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 great. Uh, there's there's a delicacy to the yeah. way the fruit finishes, yeah. and and there's a perfume to the wine as well mm -hmm. that, that's lovely. Mm. So very fresh, yeah. I'd really like to see that wine in you know five years time, mm -hmm. just to see it hit that next phase, yeah, and yeah. just see it harmonise just a tiny little bit more. It's it's very har harmonious mm. already, mm. but to just see it, see mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. pull together yeah, yeah. a little bit, yeah, yeah. More. yeah. Beautiful wine. Mm. Shall we try the San Giovese? Yes. All right. So 2016, very different year from yeah, very different. 2017. Yeah, yeah. So how was 16 for you? Uh, so more generous in terms of, uh, of quantity and um, balance, well balanced. So not too hot, not too wet, not too cold. Yeah. Yeah. The perfect year. Yes. 
yeah. <laughs> but you know, in the 2000, from 2000 except 2002, they are all very positive vintages. But they won't say that, that makes one. You say every year is the vintage of the decade, and every second yes. year is the vintage of the century. <laughs> <laughs> But I know what you're saying. There's been a lot of good years. In, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. not so extreme to make a you know uh, mm -hmm. unbottable uh, wine. And so this wine, no sulfur. Yeah, no sulfur. But in this we can smell a lot of amphoras. Yeah. So terracotta, no yeah. coat in terracotta, because we. So it, the terracotta is porous. You it's must lose a lot of, lot of volume, huh? a lot of liquid. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then for me, because now we, the Sangiovese with no sulfites goes in another container, mm -hmm. much more neutral. Mm -hmm. So I like it, but for me, amphora is too much. What's so, the character from the amphora in this wine? You see this, uh, is a kind of red. Yeah, a red, no, I should say red, brown, Red brown taste, um, little metal. Um, A little bit like blood? Yeah, blood. Mm. exactly, exactly. Yeah. For me, it's too much. So, you know, we were experimenting. Mm -hmm. So now, now we use amphora for in, in, to, to put some or Sangiovese or Merlot or Cabernet, which goes or in the Chianti Classico or in the San Marco. Mm -hmm. So, and that is very. Ding, Works. Resonates, yeah. But so, only amphora, that kind of amphora, which comes 15 kilometers from our place mm -hmm. in Pruneta, is very known for making um, many things with amphora. Mm -hmm. And they began these new things with wine only in 2005. Yep. And of course, I'm curious, so immediately I wanted to try. And I liked it. The first actually was. Um, coated with the bee wax, yep. which is nice in theory, but then the wine tastes as bee wax. <laughs> so, no way. So, let's uh, try without, yeah. and now it's to amphora. So, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. so we, now we found the, the right um, direction for amphora. It's a, it's a fine line though, isn't it? So but, but what I find is in the smell is very amphora, taste much less. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of two different things. So this is interesting because it, again, it does like like the Trebbianco have, which you should be should be calling Quattro Bianco, no? So <laughs> um, mm -hmm. is uh, it, it does have a, a slight oxidative note to it, mm. but the fruit is certainly supporting it. There's a wonderful core of vibrant fruit in there, mm. but again, lovely acidity. And so you, you add no acid to any of these wines? No, 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 no. Oh. Okay, so great natural acidity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. This is a. None, except sulfites in the one with sulfites afterward, we don't add anything. Yeah. And we, we don't take away anything. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. don't filter. It is as it is. Yeah. We take care as best that we can. Yeah. 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 In yeah. the mouth is amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a lovely uh, texture. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it, um, mm -hmm. how, do they, how do they hold up in bottle over time? Um, do they age well? Yeah, so um, the first vintage was without sulfite 2006. Mm -hmm. And we can still enjoy them. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. I made the experiment long ago, with, but the agriculture was chemical, and after 10 years, boom. Yeah. So. But now I think they will, yeah, 10, 15 years easily. Yeah, wow. And very interesting evolution. Mm. And what do you think makes that possible? Is it, again, those practices where you're looking at the system as a whole and, uh, and treating things with a bit more respect? Yeah. yeah. Stronger vines? Yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, I tasted in uh, Pashina, another amazing estate, a 78 Sangiovese with no sulfides mm. two years ago. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. The first bottle, so, 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 they went to take another one. Mm. Amazing. So we cannot predict how long yeah, they will live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, well, perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, look, it's a, it's a lovely example of a, of a wine without sulfur. Um, I think it's, a, it's a, a great expression of Sangiovese as well. Yeah. It has, yeah. has, has that, that lovely acidity. It's really zingy and, mm. and in a good way. And, and that, 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 that fresh cherry fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. and, uh, and some nice layering in from some of those oxidative characters. Uh, yeah. uh, and some lovely tannin in there too. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, oh, yeah. Um, he's behaving very well. <laughs> it likes Australia. Yeah, oh, clearly. <laughs> well, now all the I... wines, you know, in those days we tasted many. Uh, yeah, those wine likes Australia. That sounds good. They react very well, yes. <laughs> well, so. we're, we're back now after a quick reset and we're, we're having a look at your Samarco. Mm -hmm. uh, tell, me, uh, tell me about this wine. What, what are its origins? How did it come yeah. to be? So, um, origin is, um, so what I said before, so the Sangiovese was weak. And you know, in Italy it's called Il Segreto di Pulcinella, which means the secret of Pulcinella. You know, Pulcinella is the mask from Naples. Mm -hmm. So, it means everyone knows, but it's a secret. Yeah, yeah. And the secret was adding wine from Sicily or Sardinia mm. in order to make Chianti classic. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and sugar, of course, mm -hmm. which is in Italy forbidden. So we were yeah. sick of this, yeah. and so we said, how we can reinforce the Sangiovese? Mm -hmm. And so we began to graft Cabernet Sauvignon. And the first in seven, so we began in 78. So in you, seven, were, you were very early on there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, we began to taste around and, yeah, and then, okay, Cabernet Sauvignon is resistant. Mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah, is very adaptable to many different climates. Mm -hmm. And so we began to do, um, the first was Reserva 79 with some Cabernet Sauvignon. Then we liked Cabernet Sauvignon in, let's say, more than 2-3%. So we continue, and in 1980 we could release the first San Marco, which was 50% Cabernet Sauvignon, 50% Sangiovese. Mm -hmm. And it was the second, third Super Tuscan, so-called Super Tuscan, mm -hmm. and was very successful. Mm. And so we, we continue with the San Marco, and in the year it be, it's becoming much less Sangiovese, so now is about 80 Cab Cabernet Sauvignon, or 90 Cabernet Sauvignon, 5 Sangiovese, 5 Merlot. Mm -hmm. So Merlot is the last, uh, then I will speak about uh, Merlot. So what was, what was the, the ideas behind the shift? What, what... To make a, a clear differentiation, be, because now we don't do any more Reserva. But mm -hmm. before, a Reserva and San Marco was a little confusing. Mm -hmm. So now it's Pam, Chianti Classico, mainly Sangiovese, San Marco, mainly Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's more clear. You know, when, when you have too many labels, too similar, there's already so much wine around, it's, mm. in, in the, it's too much confusion, so ta, ta, clear. And they're both, they're both very individual wines, mm. uh, and, and with their own personalities. So, um, it's interesting to see these because uh, I see quite a lot of complexity straight away in, in, in both the 15 uh, and uh, yeah. 14. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely to see this wine being released as a 15 now, rather than seeing the 16 or the 17. Yeah. Uh, it seems to have resolved and come together. Uh, both of these wines have some quite amazing aromas, mm. you know, little bits of truffle and earthiness yeah. and, and yeah. little bits of wood. Yeah. So those lovely dirty characters, if you want mm -hmm, to call them mm -hmm. that, yeah, to yeah. balance the sweet fruit. Yeah. Um, and a lovely perfume that's coming off them. Mm. I think the, it's interesting to see the Cabernet tannins in here. They're, they, they're again quite robust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. It seems to be something of your dirt rather than yeah, something yeah. of the variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you find that the, you know the, the cabinet is always uh, yes, use those robots? exactly. You know, in the beginning, in the beginning, you know, the classic pepperoni, tomato. In the beginning, and then beginning means the first two, three years. Mm -hmm. So seventy-eight, seventy-nine, eighty, and then boop, the soil prevail, prevails. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and why we, sl we, have, we are slow releasing the wine? Because usually they stay after bottling two or three years in the cellar. Mm. So before we were using more wood, mm -hmm. but then the wine became too woody and tired. Mm -hmm. So now we one year, one year, three months, and when they are still here, boom, bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then two or three years in, in the cellar, so close to the vineyard. And mm. And yeah, it's interesting. glass is a good container, a very good container. We have a, a, a wine tasting course, we call it the Wine Decoded Tasting Revolution. 
And, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and one of the components of that, we talk about freshness and development. Yes, yes, exactly. So the, the importance of freshness, yes, so that the yeah. wine doesn't look tired, doesn't look yes. oxidized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the importance of development to help bring the wine together yeah. and build harmony into it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And that's, yeah. that's certainly what we're seeing yeah. in these wines. Yeah. So the difference between 14 and 15 for you? Um, I think fi- 15 is much more ready than 14. I find 14 a little raw, I should say. And 15 mm. is just more combined. Mm. So they were not so different vintages. Mm. I should say 15, little more rain, no, for sure. More, mm. A little more rain, but not dangerous rain. Mm. So, which means not too much close to the harvest. Mm. Nice uh, beginning of August, just to cut the heat of August. Yeah. yeah. I can see with the 14, you're, you're talking about this uh, slightly higher acidity. Yeah. It's bringing out the tannin a little bit more, mm. something that will resolve in time. Why is exactly. with that acidity and yeah. tannin yeah. just need the extra few years to yeah. come together. But on the nose, not dissimilar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, the, the aromas mm-hmm, and the progression. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, look, what I would say about these wines is we've got two lovely wines, uh, a great deal of complexity. There's a lot drawing you in. They're very expressive on the nose at the moment. I would agree with you that the 15 is more approachable on the palate. Yeah. With that, just, just a little bit more generosity, slightly lower acidity. Mm. Uh, or perceived acidity, mm-hmm. uh, and um, and it's brought that together. I've seen so many wines like that, 14, that you think, oh, maybe it's too acid, and then in five years' time, yes, 10 of years' time, yeah, all yeah. of a sudden you go, wow, that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah it's about waiting. That's <laughs> it, it's got the core of fruit still, oh, yeah, yeah. it shows on the nose, yeah, yeah. and lovely perfume, mm. uh, and that, again, those truffles, earthiness, mm. the complexity, mm. the underlying fruit, mm. and, and a lovely density of fruit, mm. uh, great depth and length in these yeah, wines. Yeah. Thank you for sharing those with us. And now Pleasure. we have a trilogy to finish yes. off. That, that's a really, uh, that's a, another project, very interesting. All right, we're, we're back to have a look at our last bracket. My pronunciation of Italian is very bad. So, Dolceo? Yes, that's okay. it, perfect. All right, not too bad. No, no, very well. It must have been osmosis from ants. <laughs> uh, <so. laughs> Tell me about this. We've got three vintages in front of us. Um, I didn't take full note of the vintages, so we've got 15, 11, wow, and going back to 04. Uh, no. Wow, thanks for bringing these along. That's going to be wonderful to see such a spread. Mm. And, and nice jumps between the years, so you yeah, can yeah, see yeah. different phases coming through. Yeah. Tell me about this one. So, <clears throat> so the, the project here is high density mainly. Which means all the other wines, they come from vineyards, about 4,800 uh, p- um, vines. Mm-hmm. This is about the first, there are three terraces, nicely mm-hmm. looking southeast. And the first terrace is 10,000 plant per hectare. It's a few. More than the double. Mm-hmm. So it's 54 two meters. Then we realize is too, too narrow. So down is uh, 8,000, which is, mm. is 54, 2,000, uh, two meters and a half. Mm-hmm. So of course, big competition. Uh, they, um, uh, we grow them, uh, it's called Alberello Siciliano. Beautiful. The best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because after, in the years, you see, it does like that. So there mm. are three uh, horns of two shoots. Mm. So all, each plant does usually 300 grams. And so you keep good vitality exactly. in the head of the plant, yes, yes. which is this yeah. bush vine yeah, system. Yeah, yeah, that's and it. with three shoots, you, you get to cover yeah, the yeah. whole yeah. circumference and not have a dead zone. Exactly, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. They, yeah. They, they are open to the light. Mm-hmm. And, they are t- and, you know, and usually grapes are very small mm. and berries very small. Mm. So this is burp, another density. We, we can already doing like that. Boom! It stops very fast. Mm. Um, yeah, we call it Dalceo. Alceo is the name of my father, mm-hmm. which had the idea to to do this high density. Very very and Bordeaux it, to do high density. Yeah, he could plant the first uh, terrace and then whoosh, he passed away. Mm. 
So in 90, 1990, he began to plant. And so first release was 96. And of course, we call it Dalceo. Yeah. And also, you know, Dalceo has to do with al cielo in Italian. Cielo is sky. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the estate is called, San, is called Castello de Rampolla, but the hill is called Santa Lucia. Mm -hmm. So, light, luce, mm -hmm. Lucia, light, al cielo. Mm -hmm. You see, it's mm -hmm. L C A, is, is really about light. Yeah. It's a nice play on words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. My name is Luca. Yep. So is all the, my mother was <laughs> Livia, la, 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 light, light, light. It's a little something for you really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. And so the wine here, high density Poor. and just Cabernet and Petit Verdot. Yes. Is usually is 85% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, 15 Petit Verdot, which mm -hmm. can go to 20%. And Petit Verdot is the last grape we harvest. Mm -hmm. Always green. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but, uh, different than Bordeaux, it ripes very, very well in Chianti. Mm -hmm. Very, mm -hmm. very well. So we always pick a very full, ripe Petit Verdot. I, I love the... And I'm, I'm not sure how your Petit Verdot would look by itself, but for me, when I see Petit Verdot, I love the perfume. Mm -hmm. Uh, the acidity is always wonderful. Bravo. Yes, of the th that's the main point. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah, the yeah. tannins can be alarming, uh, but if you get them ripe, yeah, and then you can handle your maceration well, yeah, they can really layer in beautifully. Yeah. Is this is this how you see petit verdot for e ex you? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and so they are harvesting different times and mm, fermentation and maceration different times. Mm -hmm. Then they may go together after maceration mm. or different tonneau, different barrique, mm. just before blending, let's say, yeah, let's say two, three months before bottling. Mm. And then we decide, da, 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 tasting. Sometimes they say, we want to go together, pump, and then. And, and do these receive more time in barrel than Semaco? No, same, one year. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's interesting because I've always, you know, for the... the well, again, until more than one year, but no, no too much. For, you know, for me, different fruit in, obviously different, but uh, in the Yarra Valley, I've always enjoyed having two winters. Mm. Two winters has been something that's worked well for me. Of course. Uh, it's very, the winter, yes. In winter, something yeah. happens in the wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be quite magical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but your, your second winter is in bottle in the end. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, immediately... Such opulence and generosity on the nose of the fifteenth. Uh, mm. The 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 aromas of the younger mm. wines mm. are very together, mm -mm. and you can see the structural elements in the in the palate and the tannins in the palate. That they're good tannins. They're not those. You know, sometimes you get the uh, the the avert oak. I'm chewing on a tree mm. tannins. Mm. These are. This, these look more like good natural tannins, but yeah. very different from the Cabernet tannins that we'd see in Bordeaux. Again, mm -hmm. that robustness and slight edginess to them. Mm -hmm. they, so, they are very long life wines, so, so. Well, I, I can tell it already. Oh. The, 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 the 2004 yeah, is incredibly yeah, yeah. young. So now we have only experience from 96. Yeah. But they can live mm. a lot. And tell me the difference between the vintages. We've got a 15, 11, and a 4. All three pretty balanced. Mm. All four um, hotter than all the other two. Mm. Much hotter. Mm. Um, and 15, yeah, 15, as I said before, is wetter. Yeah, more, mm. more humidity, yeah. Yeah, more water, yeah, water vintage, watery vintage, <coughs> but, but not dangerous, mm -hmm. but just more, yeah. The, 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 the 11 to some degree seems almost a little bit older than the 4. Si. Yeah. It seems just a yeah. little bit more developed. I yeah. think yeah. For, for me, I was talking about this yesterday regarding some Barolos. That when you get those warmer, slightly compressed vintages, sometimes you, you don't get quite as much length. Yeah, 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 yeah. Quite as much sophistication. It, it will come in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It doesn't show immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, Amazing aromas. There's a thread through these 
uh, with the complexity. Uh, and I, I think the perfume, and again, uh, what I call macerative characters, mm. you know, from extended time on skins, yeah, yeah. seems to really be coming through. Mm. Were they all handled with extended maceration? Yeah, I'm uh, 30, 40 days, no more. Yeah. yeah. It's a reasonably, reasonably long time, yeah, and uh, enough to draw out those characters. Mm -hmm. What's, has there been much that's changed over, oh. over since 2004 with 2015? Has there been big jumps for you where you thought, you know what, I think maybe we need to try, try this out or try that out? Or... Well, uh, less uh, time in barrel. Is it? Yeah. So, so yeah. that's been the, the main key? Yes, thing. anticipating the bottling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And, and has, there, has there been changes in the vineyard that you've yeah, seen? Yeah, in the vineyards, yeah. Yeah, yeah. To 15? Yeah. yeah, because, you know, beginning 94, so 2004 is um, ten, 10 years. Ten years. Yeah, yeah. And we see already a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, 2000 and uh, what we said, uh, mm. and 11, well, uh, then, yeah, is about six years more and and nine years, yeah, nine years more. Yes, then we see. I should say softer. So this the soil becomes softer. Mm. Same. Uh, so, and you know that's another amazing thing. Which, so when the soil get alive, mm. then it begins to resonate with the sky. Mm -hmm. And so somehow in the hill, and we are lucky because we have one hill. Mm -hmm. Actually, there are one hill and two hills, mm -hmm. and the river in between. Mm -hmm. So somehow those, those, that soil organized in nice hills uh, begins to resonate with the sky, and it appears a kind of, um, a kind of um, my, microcosmo. Mm. A kind of ball mm. Mm. where things happen in a different way, mm. which means, of course, we can have uh, hail, right? Ice. We can have strong, but it's always softer. Mm. Yeah. So usually we speak about oasis on a on a horizontal surface. Mm. This is an oasis in th three dimensions. Well, and it's funny that you say that because we did... We, ah, eco ecosphere, voilà. Then. Yeah. Ecosphere. Well, we used to always just think about the, the, the part of the vine above the ground. Now we're thinking so much more, as a wine industry as a whole, about the part below the ground. I think completing the whole picture, voilà. taking a... whether it be an organic or a permaculture approach yes, or yes, a biodynamic yes, yes. approach, yeah. taking the best bits of each. Yeah. It's certainly something worth, uh, worth yeah. experimenting with and yeah. playing with. Yeah. I've got to say that I love that 04 and to see it have gone from where the 15 is now, I think it would have been a different wine to the 15, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. to see where it is now, to see how it started to uh, build that extra little bit of subtle generosity, not mm -hmm. overt mm -hmm. generosity, but that subtle generosity, yeah. all of those aromas and flavors that I see in the 15 are there, but they're just a little more interwoven with each other. Mm -hmm. There's that, those secondary characters that come with age building on it and just a, a, a gentle softening in the palate mm -hmm. and lengthening of the palate. Incredible length in, mm -hmm. in, in, in those wines. Mm -hmm. The 11, you can see, it, 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 it's, it's one that you want to watch in a glass for, mm -hmm. for a bit, bit longer to, to see it pop up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But it's got the same kind of characteristics and traits. Um, mm -hmm. Shows a, a little bit of the sign of the compressed vintage. Um, I look at it as saying, all good wines, I drink the 11 a little bit earlier uh, and then, and then hang, on to, yep. hang on to my four for a, for a couple more years, even though there's seven years difference mm -hmm. in them. Mm -hmm. but, um, just one last question for you. It's a two-part question, though. Uh, if there was something that you were going to work on in the vineyard, what would it be? No, no, money's no barrier. And if there was something you were going to do in the winery, money's no barrier, what yeah. would it be? Mm, yes. Um, uh, five hours per day for workers. Five hours per day, five days per week. Mm. That's all. 
That'd so be nice. employ more more persons, but mm. so provide a nicer life. We are we are not born to work. Mm. So mm. That's Free, what my, freedom. That's what my wife's <laughs> telling me at the moment. <laughs> You know, of course, of course. You know. <laughs> so that, that's it. Now we, we are seven hours paid nine hours. But I, but seven hours too many. The last two hours is, we cannot work. We cannot do the same thing seven hours per day. I love Italy. It's, it's uh, 11 o'clock. I've already done seven hours. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. Now, hey, up till tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm off for a massage then. Um, and in the winery, would there be anything that, that is... Well, it, now we put music, so probably a better music system. Better sound <coughs> system? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, Do you know in Australia, the first things that you set up in a, in a winery, the sound system uh, and the beer fridge. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very right. basic. Yeah, yeah most yeah, important yeah, thing. Yes, yes. Wow. But the, yeah, and outside... Yes, of course. Outside, take away all the wires. We are doing it. Yeah, all yeah, the yeah. wires and yeah. just tutors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just wood, wood. And around. you can wander between. You don't have to go that way. We have it's already way. we have already four actors with that. It's amazing. Yeah. When we harvest such as freedom, you can yeah. go across. Yeah, yeah. And you, oh. <laughs> instead, <laughs> is a little military. Well, you know. I'm going to give you a project. Hi. Your project is to name every single one of your vines, <laughs> <laughs> particularly in the high density block. But hey, listen, thank you so much for coming oh. by today. You've got a, a wonderful array of wines here. There's no doubt there's bags of personality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you can see the passion in the wines and you can see the personality in the wines. Mm -hmm. And I think you can see um, your approach shining through um, in spades. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more older ones mm -hmm. and waiting mm -hmm. for some mm -hmm. of the younger ones mm -hmm. to age. 2015 is the birth year of my second daughter. Ah. So, oh. it's Magnum's aunt? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so, we're on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolute pleasure to Thank have you. you. <laughs> Cheers. You like to taste youngest to oldest? Mm. Usually I do. Ta -da -ta -da -da. Both ways. Yeah. Yes. Same. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you never know. Yeah. And Usually from uh, older to younger and then younger to old. Yeah. But and then for breakfast the next day. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the second, the third day, the fourth day is very great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. How do you find they evolve over those days? Those, mm. those tannins resolve a little bit? Yeah. 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 Usually the second day is the best. Yeah? Yeah. <coughs> We're going to put that in as a drinking tip. Open yeah. it the day before. Yeah. Voila! That would be amazing. <coughs> you know, you, you decide where to go to the restaurant. You say one day before. and they my wife. Of course. <laughs> and they open the, That is my dream, actually. The, this a relation between client and restaurant. And say, okay. And so we choose the wine. We open for you one day in advance. And then it's really, wow. We do that with our BYOs, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Because in two, three hours, the wine doesn't have, you can decant. Yeah. Oh, it's nice, of course, but it needs another time. kind of time. Yeah. And which is a few hours. Hurry it. Yeah. 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 Well, now they say, oh, one decant, on another. Yes, that's nice. But, you know, time is time.